Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. My call sign, Kilo 7 Hotel November. Welcome to Ham Radio Live Show 37. It's moving day. <laughs> Not really. Kind of. Kind of. We have to make a trip down to Northern California. It's about 500 miles. Literally. No, 600 from driveway to driveway. We figured it out once. And um, it's unfortunate circumstances. We have a, had a death in the family to my stepmother-in-law, who is such a sweetheart. Oh, gosh. She's somebody that makes everybody's life happy. And uh, we lost her in July. So we're having a celebration of life party. Not a wake or funeral. No, it's a celebration of life party because that's what she would have wanted. Anyway, we're going to talk today because we have to talk today about when not to use your radio. This show was developed for folks who are interested in amateur radio, be on the air to get their own rig, to maybe get their licenses or upgrade their licenses. You know, this isn't one of those technical shows. We're not going to get into a whole bunch of mathematics and science theory and all that. Not that that's bad. It's but because so many people look at that and it's such a big mountain to climb for them that they will not even go in. They're just not going to go any further. A good example is my father-in-law. He's a licensed ham. Finally, he waited for it his whole life. He really did. He's in his 80s. His call signs Kilo November 6, India Ocean Papa. He's out of Tracy, California. And he's just nervous about trying to, you know, grade up to his general license. And it's sad. Because it's like, I keep telling him, Dad, you can do it. You really can. But we're going to go down there with the rig and the tuner. And we're going to have some fun on his little G5 RV Junior Antenna. Which, by the way, no RFI there. Oh, so nice. Made a 20-meter QSO at 2.30 in the morning. 20 meters to Australia in a bad sunspot cycle. That's darn good with a Yesu 991 Alpha. I couldn't believe the screen on it. It was like, there's something wrong. There's no, there's no noise here. It was just pure. So we'll try the Yesu 101 MP there and have some fun over the weekend during a time that's kind of difficult. This show is going to be rather short. All right. You can see the moving boxes back there. And I've got some packing to do. I need to get the car packed up, get my wife picked up from work, and then immediately head down Interstate 5 to California as fast as we can. But I wanted to share with you a very important thing that I'd like to make sure that you know, if you're a ham or maybe wanting to be a licensed ham, when not to use your equipment. This is so important. This could save not only your equipment, but your life. This is a very important show. There are storms. We've had terrible, as I've said in previous episodes, terrible, terrible wildfires here in Oregon. Well, we finally have had some rain. But the problem we have now is we have a lot of thunderstorms. Those thunderstorms really create problems. Like, it's really hard to describe just how bad they are. Let me show you the air yesterday again down my street. This is what it looked like looking down my street yesterday. Now, we had an air quality index here in Western Oregon, here in this part of it, of 343 parts per million, which is hazardous. It's like, don't go outside and breathe the air very long. Today, it's improved tremendously. We're at 112, so that's really a huge improvement. You can see it because you can start to see the hills appear again from here in the valley. Let me show you a very important thing that I really want to make sure you understand when you don't have your gear either on the air or even plugged in, okay? When you see something like this. Now, this is courtesy of KGW Television Channel 8 out of Portland. This is their Doppler radar. This is from this morning here in Northwest Oregon. My location is literally about 8.30 from Salem, Oregon. So I'll figure about 8.30 on a clock. See that big red? Big red coming up, coming up the valley. I stopped it right there. Now, we literally have thunderstorms directly over us to our west and to our south coming our direction. When you ever have this problem in ham radio, 
The one thing I will tell you is just disconnect everything you have. Take it all away, okay? Take, you take everything offline. And the reason you do that is because you want to be sure to remove all of your, you know, radio, your power supply, any sort of amplifier, okay, your coaxial cable, all of that. And you want to get off of your equipment. Just turn it all off. Now, the reason for this is very important. I'm going to move this up a little bit and we'll move it back on screen so you can see me a little better. All right. The reason we do this is pretty simple. We do this because we don't want to lose our equipment, but we also don't want to burn our house down, right? You don't want to burn your house down. Who does? So make sure if you see thunderstorms or you hear thunderstorms or you know of within 50 miles of where you live, please don't turn your gear on. Turn it off. Let me turn the camera down just a little bit. This is actually the rig cam. I can't use the rig because of the way that the storms are here right now. So no broadcasting right now. There's thunder everywhere. But more important is to make sure you unplug your coaxial cable from inside your house, like to your rigs. If you, if you plug your antenna right into your rig, not in through an antenna tuner, unscrew the coax cable. Remove it, put it on the floor. Same thing with any other antennas you have hooked up unscrew them. If you use a switch, unscrew them from the switch. You don't want any coax cable coming in due to lightning. Now, there are lightning arresters, and we'll talk about that in another episode, but it's still good practice. Unplug everything. The second thing is unplug your equipment. You could have a power surge that comes, you know, if you're hit by lightning or anywhere near your property, it can power surge into your power box and blow up everything in your house. You don't want that. You've just invested a lot of money for all your ham gear, right? So you want to make sure and unplug your gear. Now, one thing I'll help you with with this episode, I hope, is to eliminate something called ground loops. Now, ground loops are not like fruit loops or like hula hoops or like magnetic loops. They're bad things. What they do is they can create RF on your, on your shack so you're hearing, you know, noise you shouldn't be hearing, radio frequency interference, they can also shock you. Literally, not shock you like, wow, but shock you like, ouch. <laughs> See the difference? This right here is one of the best little devices you can use to eliminate ground fault. Did you know that? A ground loop. This little device essentially takes your ground, keep in mind, from your and, and check you with your electrical. This is not an electrical advice seminar. <laughs> I'm not an electrician, but I will tell you that it will help you because it's my, it's my personal experience that it helps you. Ground with electricity will always find the shortest way to get there, okay? Whether that means through your ground rod that you had driven in the ground. Again, don't use the ground rod that you use from your power box. Just Go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your home improvement center is. Buy yourself a copper clad rod, drive it in the ground two or three feet, and then use an electrical clamp to clamp onto it. Get some stout number 10 or even better yet, get some copper braid. Get that to the clamp, clamp it down real tight, get it into your shack. Then clamp your or hook all of your grounds from your equipment directly to that copper braid. That's the best way to do it. But the unfortunate thing and something a lot of hams miss is if they plug their three prong plugs into a power box, guess what? Now you got another ground. So the ground is going to find the shortest way it can to get to the earth, whether it be through your ground circuit you've got set up out your window or out your wall if you've set it up through that copper strap or copper wire coming in through that, you know, ground rod, or through your electrical system. Now, keep in mind your electrical system has a power or a hot, then it has a neutral. Now, many people confuse that for a ground, like positive and negative, right? It's not. 
okay? And the third prong, which is the ground, doesn't serve as a quality ground or a reasonable ground for your ham equipment. It could destroy it if you rely on that and don't use the ground that's with your equipment. So your radio, your tuner, your amplifier, any sort of equipment that requires a ground, ground it to your copper strap or your copper wire that comes from your ground rod near your shack. Shortest possible connection. This is important. Shortest possible connection. Then hook up your power strip or your rig directly to one of these. And the reason why, see what's missing? Right there. The ground connection is missing. Your radio is still going to work just fine. But the advance it has now is it doesn't have two grounds connected to it. Did you ever think of that? By hooking your, rear, your rig into a wall outlet or into a power supply that has a three-pronged ground and you plug it in there, you now have essentially giving it another ground. And you're giving it a ground out the back to your copper strap or your copper wire. Just these are like, I think I paid a buck 49 for two of them. That's all they cost. They're not that expensive. Hook it up to your power strip, plug it in the wall. That's what I would advise. Again, check with your electrician or your local electrical board. But the quickest way to elim eliminate, you know, eliminate RF ground loops, things that cause interference, issues that might hurt you, it's not a bad solution. Bob Heil, I want to thank him for the tip. It's a great tip, and it's true. Ground will always find the shortest way to get there, meaning an electrical circuit, positive, negative. That negative is going to find the shortest route to the ground every time. Don't make it through your radio. Make it through your copper ground you've got outside, okay? No show tomorrow, no show Sunday, no show Monday. We're going to be down in Northern California. We'll come back on Tuesday with show 37. We'll be talking about the ZS6BKW dipole antenna. We'll go over some computer modeling on it. Also, let you know a little bit about why I use it and the success I've had using one now for about 18 months. It is a phenomenal antenna, and I'm really excited to bring that show to you. I really am. But with no ability to really use the rig right now, we just made some lemonade out of lemons, okay? Until show 37, be well. Thank you, guys. I look forward to spending this time with you. It's a chill show to try and help you just enjoy a little bit about ham radio, learn a little bit as well, and hopefully have a little bit of fun. Thanks for being here. God bless you. See you at show 37. Until next time, God bless you guys from the shack, the moving shack of Kilo 7 Hotel November. My name is Larry. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.